Watch you guys, got another video here for you. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at diagnosing uh, a non uh, working TV here. This is a Samsung TV, and how we can source parts and get this fixed and get it back up and running again. Okay, now before you start any type of work like this, make sure you've got plenty of uh, confidence and experience in this type of field because this can be fatal if you get a electrocution from any of the parts inside here. Okay, so you've been warned. So anyway, first off, have a look on the back of the TV and you will see uh, part numbers and also model numbers and serial numbers and this stuff is gold uh, for finding parts uh, and components online second hand parts sometimes if the TV is getting a little bit old you may want to repair the whole TV yourself without replacing the parts so here you can see me pointing at some screws we're just going to remove the screws from the back panel I've got this line flat on the uh, floor here now make sure you ground yourself with the metal chassis there and you can see we have the power board and we also have the uh, logic board and the inverter down the side there you'll see the black bit down the side that's the inverter board and we're going to be looking at the power board which is the brown board in the middle this is what gives power uh, to the actual TV and, and in this case the actual power board is failing or failed so we're going to take a look at the actual power board here. Now make sure you ground yourself and make sure you examine both sides of the board, the top end and the bottom end. Look for charring or burning around any components or anything like that. If they are, that's where it's let go. Here is a fuse, which is your inlet for the TV. And this is actually blown. When I tested this with a multimeter, it had already blown and uh, something's blown that fuse. Now you could replace the fuse and hope the old telly fires up but most of the time something's blown that fuse out of protection and you need to examine the board itself now if you are going to fix the board you need to know a little bit about electronics and uh, use a multimeter to examine the board itself here we have some caps these are sometimes blown and risen and the actual heat sinks the silver things you see there normally generate a lot of heat and they actually dry out over time the caps and then they can uh, spew out all their uh, belongings on top of the cap there you'll see there's a little cross there and they normally rise up I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later on but if you're going to replace your board I'll show you how to do that as well so the way you can look at this is get a torch and have a look at the board itself and see if you can see anything that's burnt or any sort of blown caps all right that's really important uh, when you're diagnosing these types of TVs as I said I've already gone through here with a multimeter if you don't know how to use a multimeter then you may be best leave this alone and actually leave it to someone who does know how to do it now blown caps will look something like this they will be all bulgy or spewing uh, some sort of uh, stuff out the top here and that is a normal case where you're going to get bulging caps and you can replace caps instead of the whole board now this is the board that I have purchased online and uh, it, you can get them on eBay and as you can see it says new uh, replacement from damaged TV and this is version 1.4 and you can see the actual number here now that's important you marry up the number with the number on the board and you should be pretty much good to go once we release these screws here this will release the board and release all these uh, connections here make sure you take a photograph if you're not familiar with this type of stuff and this will help you uh, put the board around the right way and plug in the right cables but they should really only go in one way but it's always nice to have a backup just in case now you can see the model number here of this board uh, you can see it at the top and the code and the reference number 1.1 1. Uh, 1, uh, and also the date now sometimes the revision of these boards will work 1.1 and 1.4 they sometimes work and you should be okay but you want to make sure that you check uh, before you start purchasing those so i'm just going to put this new board back in i was very fortunate to get this board uh, like this uh, new board so i'm just going to quickly screw this all down and i'm just going to quickly uh, screw this up so i've got the screws here and uh, you can use a screwdriver or a hand uh, tool depending on what what you want to do it doesn't really matter just don't touch any of the caps or components on the board because uh, you don't want to get a, a shock from those some of these do carry a charge and they can carry a charge for quite some time so be very very careful now we've got some power to that board you can see the power line there going into the board and I'm just going to switch it on to see if we get any sort of display because we had no display and there you go we've got some display to that TV now so the power board has been replaced and now you can see the actual TV is actually firing up with a PlayStation 4 and we've got that working just fine. 
Now remember guys, when you're working with electricity, if you're not sure what you're doing, then leave it alone for the professionals. Uh, and basically, if you're not quite familiar with using multimeters and stuff like that, you may want to leave it and let a TV repair guy have a go at it, okay? But if you do want to do it, then make sure you marry all the model numbers and the part numbers up, and you should be pretty much good to go from there. Anyway, I hope this one helps you out, guys. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoy these videos, guys, then hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date when we upload new videos. And have a great weekend.